Who all is here for the train photography workshop? We got one shoes today. <laughs> well, you get to listen to it for free anyway. <laughs> Photographing trains is a particular, some would say peculiar, form of photography. You must have the skills of a landscape shooter with intensity, great concern for light, weather, and composition. And you also must have the knowledge like a wildlife or bird shooter. He knows where the animal lives, but combine this with all the chops of the sports and action shooter, he knows the paper camera's capability is cold so that when the moment comes and the split second presents itself, you're ready. Remember, you're proposing for something that isn't there, it won't stop to give you a second chance, and it will kill you to get it close to. Well, hello, my name is David. I'm a uh, David Bell Photography, and welcome to the historic Railway Museum of San Angelo. First, I just want to say thank you for being here. You're welcome to have a seat if you'd like. It's kind of, we usually do this in the small room, but it didn't have a TV, and we didn't know who all was going to come today. Um, we're going to talk about a number of things today, including uh, train photography, using drones, and just the safety stuff that's involved in all of that. Then we'll discuss some tips and tricks, how to get some better picture of trains and anything that's train related. And then after, after you get done with all that, we'll head outside and take some pictures of the trains and the tracks and the museum and anything you feel like taking a picture of. After we're done, if you want, we can come back and show, up, show our pictures off and compare notes. And go from there. Well, let's get into the boring but important safety stuff. Um, I would like to point out that the tracks outside are live tracks. Trains do come through here and they will. Uh, if you hear the uh, train sounds outside, it's not a sound effect, it's an actual train coming down, barreling down on you at a whopping 20 miles an hour. They don't go very fast through here, city rules, but they do come through. <clears throat> um, let's see. Trains around like Little Odessa, they get up to 50, 60, 70 miles an hour, so it makes for quite a bit more of a challenge to photograph them as opposed to the ones just sitting still. <laughs> Gotta have all different settings and everything. Well, We'll cover a lot of that stuff. Um, here's a six tips from Operation Lifesaver. They're like the train, train safety people. That's all. Uh, trains cannot stop quickly. It takes a good quarter mile to a half mile or more for it to stop. If they see you on the track, your, your history. The train literally cannot stop that fast. It cannot do it. They are way too heavy and we're going to be slow. Uh, an optical illusion makes it so that it's really difficult to determine how fast the train is or how far it is away from you, kind of like the airplane is coming in for landing. It looks like it's just kind of hovering. It's actually doing like 100, maybe 200 miles an hour. Just from where we're at, it looks really slow. How the same with the train. When they're moving real fast, it'll be on you in a heartbeat before you even think about it. Most trains, your average train, hangs up over the edge of the tracks about three feet. So you may think you're far enough away, but you get something that's carrying a wide load and it'll be <laughs> trains are pretty mean. Uh, railroad tracks, trestles, yards, and rights away, anything pretty much having to do with trains is all private property. So be very careful about where you stand. You might end up in jail just for standing there. Or you get a car ride. Air yeah, I have a wheelchair here. No, I can't. Um, no tracks should ever be assumed to be abandoned or inactive. They'll usually be marked, but not always. There's some out here that are abandoned that are not marked. Obviously, they don't work in any pieces, but, but just in general, just, you can never really tell if a train track is dead or not. And people who see your pictures online or on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, they have a tendency to copy what they see on there. If you're doing dangerous things out there, people that see your pictures might start doing dangerous things. So just try to keep in mind. Um, as far as the uh, drone stuff, you ever use drones or ever flown drones? That's a lot of fun. It's, the ones that come out right now are super easy. They pretty much fly themselves. But there are some legal issues that come up when you're doing train photography, especially involving drones. 
Um, generally, it's okay to fly over a train or just pass over it, but you don't want to be flying and hovering over it or anything because that can get you a $10,000 fine and jet time. And some of the train tracks, nothing around this area, I don't know if there's any in Texas, but some of the train tracks are considered critical infrastructure. And if you end up flying close to it, even they will get a $10,000 ticket and jet time. And same with some of the buildings and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. We can skip most of the drum stuff since so you don't have drums. That was the fun part. Um, when it comes to train photography, a lot of it is based on the angle that you're shooting. A lot of people like a 45 degree angle, sometimes they call it three quarter angle. Some people call it a wedgie. I have never called it that because I had some wedgies when I was kids. A <laughs> roommate made that for me. He thinks he's funny. Basically, if your you know, train is, you know, you know, here's, here's your tracks, here's your train, anything from about this angle, from anywhere from 45 degrees to about 80 degrees. Generally, that's what most people try to shoot the train at. <clears throat> if there's, of course, there's a lot of angles to choose, that's the most popular angle. Most people, uh, most train routes in Japan kind of, kind of shoot at that angle. Ideally, you'll generally want the sun at your back so the train's illuminated and all the windows are sparkling and traffic and all chrome, pretty sub glitters. If the train's behind you, you can still have the sun's behind the train, you can still do that, it's fine. It'll just make the train kind of shadowy and everything else lit up. But it all just depends on what you like, you know, as a photographer. Uh, when the moment comes and you're standing there by the tracks and the train's coming through, luckily here they're over here in the 20s, so you get lots of time, but we're there Generally, when you're standing there in front of and hopefully on the side of a little bit of the tracks, and you'll get hit. You'll probably uh, forget about everything you want. You're, you're, you're excited, you're nervous, you're about to have a good picture, and you'll forget all this stuff. In the Don't be afraid to use auto settings. You know, I use sometimes depending on what I'm doing. Like I got a shooting video now, it's I've always been on audio and auto for that because it just knows better. A lot of people have made a lot of money to make these cameras it was pretty insanely smart. Nikon is a really good camera. So it depends on what you're wanting. Location, location, location. <clears throat> if you want the best images you could possibly get, then the prerequisite is the best location. The same is true for all, all photography, whether it's trains or the moon. Or anything, just people in the foreground, background, your setting is really important. Unless you're doing like up close photos, but we'll cover that in a little while. Um, even if you find yourself in a spot where a lot of other photographers take pictures, just try to find something that nobody else has ever seen before. This could be an area where the drone comes in handy because you can get above stuff where you wouldn't normally be able to be without hiring a helicopter. If you need to, then you get on you get down on your belly, you lay down on your side, you lay down on your back, whatever the case, where you can get a good shot from something that nobody's ever seen. Um, just this last weekend at the 4th of July concert, my friend's daughter, who likes to steal my camera, I mean, borrow my camera, she uh, she takes some of the worst pictures I've ever seen. She won't use the focus, and she, doesn't, she just doesn't know anything about cameras, really. But every now and then, she will get a picture of something that nobody has ever seen because she is gay tall and she sees things that I, I just cannot physically see from up here. She took a picture of my house reflected in the finger of my pickup. And she was you know, down here pretty much on her hands and knees doing this stuff. And I never would have thought about that. And it ended up being bad out, badly out of focus, but it's a really cool picture just because I think I mean I personally never seen that before. And it was just you just never really know. This, Try different things. Your I little sister. Are you on the other one? They're here for your class thing. Oh, awesome. Well, we've already started. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. It's all good. 
Um, y'all are here for the car and car and dress car and dress for the boat. It's all good. Thank you. Um, let me go back to a couple of words. Okay. Slides. Feel free to have a seat if you'd like. Probably the most popular angle of train photography is called the wedgie. It's a, uh, I don't call it that because I've been used by those in the past. Uh, but from generally a 45 degree angle or a maybe like a three quarter angle, anywhere from kind of the corner of the train looking on is typically what most uh, train doctors do. But there are literally 65,000 angles of train that you take a picture of. So don't, don't get stuck on just the one, but it's, it's a typical one. Your location is a very important part of the photography. Yeah, especially with trains, since not around here you can't really predict when they're going to come through, but in other places they're more of a schedule, and you can kind of pick and choose where you want to set up. If you know the lights going to be good in the morning, set up there a little early, and just wait for a little while, and just try to find a, a really cool you know, back lid or forward lid shot, wherever you're looking for. There's a lot of different ways and things you can do for trains. Timing is another very important part of the getting a good, good shot of the train. Just being in the right place at the right time makes a big difference. I, I just come in on that Saturday just to volunteer and try to see what I got here. I heard the train coming and I got my camera set up and just happened to get a decent video of the train going by. That's all I got well, timing is everything, especially when you have a moving train. If the train is coming around the curve, and you're hitting straight on as, it's, as the front of it's coming through the curve, and the rest of the train, that ends up being a gorgeous shot. But if you were to stand just a couple of inches this way or that way, or take a picture a couple seconds earlier or later, and the train would be in a whole different spot, the lighting would be different. You'd just, just being there at the right place at the right time is all the difference in the world. And even just at different times of day, your train, you know, the picture will look different depending on where the sun is, where the shadow falls. Basically, just kind of find a good spot and just scope it out for a while and just try it different, different times of day, different seasons, different weather. Shutter speed. Um, with the shutter speed, you can kind of determine what kind of a look you get. Do you like it when the train is coming by really fast and it looks real blurry? Then you want to use a, show, a slow shutter speed and a tripod. Definitely want a tripod to do that. If you want the train to be nice and clear and crisp and maybe the background blurry, you want to use a fast shutter speed. But these out here, it doesn't really matter. They don't move very fast at all. In fact, they're frozen, I think. So it doesn't really matter which shutter speed you use on these. They're not going anywhere. But it's, it all depends on what kind of a shot, what kind of final product you want with your shots. Never, uh, all determines if you want a, like I said, if you want a nice, cool, blurry, fast looking train, you want, probably want to put the camera facing the side of it, not a 45 degree angle, but more of a side, and then you'll get pretty much the whole train as it goes through. But you got to be careful with that because it can end up looking accidental, or like you just accidentally hit the wrong button and now you got a blurry picture. And if you set it up all, you can get a nice background, foreground, get everything looking the way you want it, it'll end up being a really cool shot. It's up to you, whatever you like. <laughs> One of my favorite angles of taking train photography is using a wide angle lens down really close to the ground. I think at this one I just literally set the camera on the ground and just kind of walk away and get my patience. And if you, if you, especially with the wide angle lens, you'll get near the whole train shot and a big blown up. You know, the, the part you're focusing on when you blow it up, you generally can see nearly the rest of the train. I probably should have had it a little more towards the 45 degree angle, it would have got the whole train. <laughs> at, uh, at, at slow shutter speeds, uh, so dealing with moving trains, you get a nice blur, you put it down on the ground, you get 
because the all the ground will be nice and sharp and focused. The train itself will be blurry as can be, and it ends up looking really neat. Um, try to keep in mind that all the gravel train is 360 degree angles, 360 degrees of angles. And if you're using drones, you get 180 degrees of angle on the top. That ends up being 64,800 different angles that you can take a picture from. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of choice. <laughs> Anywhere you want, especially with a drone, you can get a picture from pretty much anywhere. And that just gives you a lot of options, really. I've got pictures with this train, this same train, from all angles, different heights, different times of day. And it's all really it's the same picture, so to speak, but they're all slightly different. And some people like this view, some people like that. But really, it's up to you what do you like, what do you want to see in your camera. Something else that's uh, interesting besides just the trains themselves do the train tracks and stuff to this. I got here last night just kind of screwing around, trying some different lenses and different angles. I was literally laying down on my back at one point, just shooting almost straight up at the train. It didn't end up being a very cool picture, but you know, you got to try. You never know what's going to work or what won't work. Um, sometimes the tracks themselves are more interesting than the trains. If you spot a section of trail or a track that crisscrosses over itself, that can end up being a really cool picture, especially you get some lights and shadows playing on it. You get different colors on the tracks and the, you know, the glint from the sun. Sometimes that could be way more cool than the train. And if you have time to kill, if you have an hour or two to kill, you can set up right here and maybe get the shadows that change from, change from one side to the other and make a little time-lapse video or something. That would be kind of a neat thing to do. Of course, light is literally the basis of photography. The word photograph is two Greek words, photos and graph, which photos is light, graph is to draw. So when you take a picture, what you're literally doing is drawing a picture with light. You literally cannot have a picture without light. If you can't get the camera won't be black. <laughs> if you do media photography, you have to kind of deal with it sometimes. But, but, um, now, and since trains do run on tracks that don't move, you can plan ahead for that. If you know the light is going to be great at 3 p.m., then get there at 2.30 and just get set up and just wait. And then right when the sun looks just how you want it, that's when you get your picture. Take a few extra before and after just in case. But you can even plan months or years ahead. I do a lot of astrophotography, so I kind of have to know what the moon is going to be doing what, where the planets are. And I, you know, I'll plan shots out six months ahead. Just Googling when the moon's going to be doing what it's going to be doing, and I know that's going to make for a cool picture. And I'll just go scout out the area ahead of time and just set up and basically just get prepared to be where you want to be. Where you think the picture will happen. I think we're just kidding. But I think we're just Details can also be a, a cool thing to get pictures of. You don't need to get the whole train of tracks, just a little, one little. Whatever, I have no idea what that is. It's on the box car right there, but I have no idea. Just a little box oh, car was kind of neat looking. You get a picture of a gear or a picture of really just a line. Yeah. Well, it's an arm. Well, don't be afraid to get close to the train, assuming that they're stopped and it's not private property. You don't want to go and you're just, you know, it's a safe place to do it. Yeah. If you're trying to get closer to some of the gears or some of the stamp lettering. But really, just anything else that stands out to you that you think looks cool. That would make it. If you think it's a cool picture, everybody else might be. Thank you. Along with you know anything to do with trains, people and things at the trains can be just as just as fun and good subjects. That's a, it's a Cisco. He he generally works at our communications room. He knows more about telegraphs and teletypes than I could even try to uh, try to talk about. But um, not all great trip photography involves actual trains. Sometimes the people or the places you might see, you know, a, a sign that you think looks really neat, or uh, you know, the, the crossing bucks coming down. You might pretty much anything. You might think of an old train station or just an old old railroad bridge. I mean, there's all different kinds of train photography, and it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily just have to be just a train. There's all kinds of stuff you can get pictures of. 
Then take pics that are from that low angle and kind of wide lens. It'll make the train look huge. If you're trying to get a, a train, if you want, if you want your picture to show the fast moving train, that's when you would kind of maybe stay to the side of the train and use a long, a, a, a long exposure speed, you know, a quarter of a second, half a second, half a second, depending on the amount of light you have. And that'll make the train nice and blurry. But then also you folks sort of look like you took a picture of a train and just tear and tear it through there. Um, Really, you just kind of want to you know, just think about what draws you to the trains and try to capture that with your pictures and hopefully it'll show through the people that are looking at them. The important part would be be original. I said there's, there's literally 64,800 angles of a train to take a picture of. So surely you can get a picture of something that nobody else in the world has ever taken a picture of. You might, you might get an award-winning shot. Um, it's always good to study your masters. You know, people that have been there before and done this, they they can give you good advice or just give good ideas. I've, I've been researching for weeks, different angles and stuff that look cool. Of course, at the end of the day, everybody takes 45 degree in wedgie shots. So you can take the best wedgie shot in the world and it's going to look just like everybody else's probably. That's, uh, that's the big thing is the wedgie shot. But so just don't be afraid to experiment. Try, try different stuff. It's in different seasons, different weather. You, know, you get a train in the fog. You know, that might be a shot nobody in the world has ever seen. Then last but not least, the most important thing, is have fun. If you're having fun taking pictures, odds are they'll come through in the picture and the people that are looking at your stuff will see that you had a good time and they can tell from the picture that Hey, this is a fun thing, maybe I should look into this. So, you know, don't be afraid to try new things, try different angles, lay on the ground, stand up on a ladder if you want to. There's just all kinds of stuff to do with trains and train stations, train tracks, train people. It's, it's really a super crazy wide field and there are just all kinds of things to take pictures of around here. That pretty much sums up everything as far as the uh, Inside part of the workshop, are any questions, concerns, comments, queries, posters? Who wants to take a picture of the train? <laughs> 